Hi guys, it's Alicia here with my work basket. Today we're going to flip through this vintage Rockabye Baby book by Columbia Minerva. It's a pattern, it's a pattern book of knit and crochet patterns. And then what I'm also going to do is there is a pattern in here. I just did a quick flip through, so most of it's new to me also, but um there's a pattern in here with a really neat stitch technique or just a really it creates a really neat looking stitch so we're going to try that out also so we're going to flip through then we're going to do kind of a stitch tutorial for the one neat stitch that i noticed in here i'm wearing the camera in the chest harness today so hopefully i don't like shake around too much um i do try to be really still in our videos because i tend to be prone to motion sickness hopefully I'm very still for you guys and I don't make anybody feel queasy. So I could not find a copyright for this book. I'm suspecting 60s and there's also a few notes here. Um, somebody, Angeline something, yet, yet, yeftik, marked 1973 up here. It was originally a dollar and then Lee Ward's priced it up to a dollar 25 over that. So all right the rockabye baby book now when i do these um flip throughs my camera screen is tiny it's about two inches by about one inch so it's hard for me to see how much detail of this that you're seeing so i do try to kind of bring the the book up to you if need be of course there's a layette the dainty cable layette with booties, a bonnet, and a sweater. The lacy layette. And then the lazy daisy layette. Oh, that's neat. Um, so the neat thing about this, and I hopefully it'll show in the video, it has almost like vines. It looks like vines growing up the thing. So there's leaf, 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 leaf. It looks like leaves growing up. That's really neat. That's a stitch pattern that I didn't notice. But yeah, so it's hard to see. I mean, it's only a black and white picture. It's not the easiest to see in real life, but hopefully that shows well on camera. I wonder if... So it sounds like what they do is they work the lazy daisy embroidery stitch. So you crochet your sweater, your bonnet, your blanket, and then they just embroider the lazy daisy stitch. So if you know how to do the lazy daisy stitch, which is a pretty easy stitch, um, you could easily do this even kind of without a pattern. If you don't know how to do the lazy daisy stitch, you know, say so in the comments and I can try and do a quick tutorial for you. So the lazy daisy is embroidered on in kind of a vine method. The mock cable. Afghan stitch. That's an interesting take on the so these older books when they say afghan stitch they mean what we usually now call tunisian crochet but that's also kind of a unique stitch we might have to come back kind of circle back to that as well because that's not a standard tunisian stitch that's not the standard tunisian stitch that's kind of a different um, I'm trying to read the pattern to see what makes it different. Uh, okay, so all they do for this one is, like the standard stitch, they work the first row the same way, and then the row working back for the afghan stitch, you go through, you yarn over and draw through two loops. Wait, you usually don't go through two loops now that I think about it, don't you? I'll have to come back to that one day because I can't fully picture, but the texture of that's just a little bit different than the classic Afghan stitch. So something else is going on there. They call this the faggoted layette because like the holes in that lacy stitch. We apparently have a storm blowing in, so hopefully it's not getting too dark out here. This is cute. A smocking story. 
has knitted smocking at the top and a I think that no okay so then this goes with this one and that also looks you called that one the jiffy but it also has kind of a smocked look there so that one has the sweater and the cap tip toppers that's what they call this one this is a cute stitch pattern also I don't know what made that texture in there. It's just kind of a bumpy. It may be like a variant of the waffle stitch. Alright. The blouse in Afghan stitch. And I just showed the raglan, raglan cable jacket. That's another one with that afghan stitch, but that's got a unique stitch pattern also. Mm, right, sorry about that little skip. I had to shut off the camera and go do something real quick. Um, the magazine is on the exact same page. We did have a bit of a storm come in, so hopefully it's not too cloudy for you. Hopefully the lighting is still good. So I was saying that this blouse in afghan crochet, and again, afghan crochet is what we usually now call Tunisian. That's got an interesting texture too, so I might have to work back through this book and just try some of these different stitches. Hooded jacket. I love the kid has his arms like this, like he's catching the ball, but the ball is like already up in his elbows. That's funny. That's such a like a little kid thing. Reversible jacket with hood. Oh, that looks like a quick easy one there. Just like garter stitch. <laughs> Fat little baby. Okay, so then there's two woven blankets. It's the same pattern, just in two different sizes. I've actually done a similar pattern to this, although theirs looks like they may have worked in like back stitch only to create even more texture with ridges here. It's essentially a crochet mesh, and then you weave the yarn through. And I've done a plaid blanket like that for my son. Um, and then this afghan with kind of a lacy stitch. And then this one with the poodle is the stitch that I wanted to try today. It may or may not be as like interesting as it seems, but especially with it being in black and white, you just can't, can't quite tell what's going on there. So this is the stitch that we're gonna kind of do a sample of. And I did read it a little bit and it's essentially like a single crochet and a double crochet in like the same stitch, I think. Um, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes you can kind of picture it by reading it, sometimes not. I also thought the poodle was hilarious. Um, this one is done in squares. I'm not necessarily planning to make the whole blanket or a whole square, but we are, that is the stitch that we're going to play with today. Hearts and darts, mother and daughter cardigan. That's super cute. TV sweater set. Sorry about that. I didn't realize you couldn't see their faces. That's got a cute stitch pattern to it, too. There's a lot of cute stitches in here. Sweater twins. Her face looks familiar. Like, maybe she went to want to be an actress in something. Or maybe she just reminds me of somebody, but her face looks familiar. Brother and sister suit. So the tops and bottoms are both knit. The sweaters are more or less identical, except for which side has the buttons. And then the little girl gets a pleated skirt and the little boy gets shorts. Those are cute too. On this page, you have the boy's suit. So creatively named. And the tri tyromene suit for the little girl. Ty I'm probably saying that wrong. Ty Tyrolene. I've heard that before and I don't actually know what it means. I thought it was like a type of yarn, but it just calls for wool and Shetland wool. So I don't... These stitches on the skirt are cute. Easy to put on sweater with a very big reminder to make sure your stitch gauge is correct. Back when 
babies had big old cloth diaper butts all the time. So play suit. This is shown on the cover with the snap. And then it snaps in the back. That's cute. Legs. And then the surplice set. A little cloth diaper and butt takes me back. We actually cloth diapered my son. And he constantly, like we would regularly buy vintage clothes if we could. Because they had space to allow for that big old cloth diaper butt. And now cloth diapers are more common than when he was born. I mean, he's 14 now. But now they're they're a bit slimmer. They're more of that all-in-one. And they're kind of, they're losing a little bit of that, that big old fat cloth diaper butt. This is the Knitted Needlepoint Mayette. I can't really tell. There's these lumps periodically, and I can't tell from the picture if they're a knit stitch or something embroidered on it later. The fact that it says needlepoint makes me think maybe they go back in and do something. Um, yes, so it does say you'll need a light color of yarn for crochet edges and embroidery, so I guess they do... You just can't quite tell in the pictures what it is. It just looks kind of like a little bunch, like a tuck stitch. And then there's instructions and instructions and instructions. And then the handy general instructions sheet at the back. I love this. They have a built-in ruler right there for you to check your gauge. And I find that just fascinating. And then the back cover is the same as the front. And this is the little play set. Oh, there we go. I bet that's the embroidery set. So, sorry, let me circle back here. So the knitted needlepoint layette that I was saying, you can't quite see kind of what's going on there, is the one shown on the cover. And it's little, like, embroidered flowers, it looks like. You can see kind of a pink and a green. So that's what's going on now. Okay, so that is the flip through. And now time for the crochet stitch. Okay, so this is what we're going to try. We're going to flip over to page 42 for our pattern. Now, because I don't know the date of this, I cannot give you the entire pattern because I don't know if it's still under copyright or not. I suspect that it's not, but I can't prove that. So I will give you the basics of how to do this stitch and you can take it from there. So this is 738.19. So for the pattern stitch, you're going to need a multiple of three plus four. So I'm going to go for... Let's see, 15, we'll go 19 stitches. 19 stitches usually makes a decent. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay. So around 19 or 20 stitches usually makes a decent swatch. So I'm going for 19, a multiple of three. That'd be 15 plus four, chain to the desired length. That's part one. Okay. One DC in fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, four. Skip two chain, one single crochet in next chain. Chain three. One double crochet in same chain. Um, repeat across. So we're going to skip two and then single crochet, chain three, double crochet in the same space. Sorry, I think I got a bit off camera there. Chain three, 
So skip two and then single crochet bit of a fuzz fluff there chain three double crochet in the same space all right skip two single crochet chain three double crochet in the same space All right, and then to end, you're going to single crochet in the last chain, chain three, and turn, okay? So you're gonna end up with kind of a scallop stitch so far. This is my first crochet stitch tutorial with this new camera. I hope you are able to see clearly what I'm doing. I'm going to try to type the instructions here at the bottom of the screen and that might help okay so row two and row two is what you're going to just repeat over and over and over I'm going to be having some yarn difficulties because this little beastie always with this beastie okay so row two one DC in first single crochet And then we're going to single crochet in next single crochet. Okay, ah, I see what's kind of happening here, I think. So then you're going to one single crochet in next single crochet, okay? chain three double crochet in the same space so you're creating these scallops those tucks that you see are because you're working kind of between each of these scallops so you're creating these scallops and then those are poking up towards you kismet i need that yarn and i'd prefer it not be all drooly with cat spit Okay, so, so again, it's very much like the first row. You're single crocheting, so not here in this end in this double crochet. You're skipping to the beginning of the stitch, single crochet, chain three, double crochet in that same space. That yarn got a bit splitty on that one. So now you see we're at the next scallop. So I'm skipping over to the single crochet part of the scallop. One single crochet, chain three, double crochet in the same space. So you're essentially creating scallops and bubbling those scallops up. That's where that texture is coming from. That's a pretty neat little stitch. So single crochet, chain three, double crochet in the same space. And I'm at my end here. At the end, one single crochet in first chain of turning chain. So we're gonna come down here to the bottom. chain three and turn so each row you're making these scallops and you're working in those scallops to make these kind of bumps so it's kind of like a type of bobble but made with a scallop that's actually pretty neat all right so i'll do another row here so you repeat that second row two for the pattern and to make one square, 
They have you chain 22 to measure 6 inches and work 16 rows. And then single crochet all the way around that square. And then you can, you know, do what you want with those squares. So, 1 DC in first DC. So that's that very first stitch. And then single crochet. I'm trying to see. Sorry, apparently I can't talk and crochet at the same time. I'm trying to see if essentially do all of those bumps go to the front or does it create one bump on each row, if that makes sense. So it's single crochet, chain three, double crochet in the same stitch. single crochet, chain three, and I am going a bit faster for my actual stitches here. I'm kind of assuming you know how to do a single and double crochet and a chain, and if you don't feel free to watch my other videos, I do have tutorials on how to do that. Single crochet, chain three, double crochet in the same space and then at the end single crochet in the first chain of the turning chain sorry my yarn got a bit splitty there one two three chain three and turn so most of my, it looks like it's going to create an alternating row. And let's kind of verify that with the picture. It looks like you could potentially push the bobble a little bit more to the front, but it doesn't tell you to do that. So I think it's creating an alternate where both sides are textured, which I actually prefer. I don't like when there's a front and back. Um, yeah, the spacing of it does look like there would be a gap so you essentially have the row and then this smooth space would be where they're on the back side so yes it looks like they should alternate that texture every row so let's see again I'll do one more row one double crochet to start and then single crochet chain three, double crochet, single crochet, one, two, three, double crochet. So it really is that same little, almost, almost like a V stitch each time. So you single crochet, chain three, double crochet single crochet, chain three, and you double crochet in that same space. And I keep forgetting if you end with a single or a double. So end with a single and then chain three. So you do create, it alternates that texture. Um, I grabbed a random crochet hook, four millimeter. It might be a little bit small. I also grabbed a random yarn. The suggestion is just use a you know, the pattern calls for worsted and a G hook. So really you're just going to want any crochet hook that matches your yarn. The thing that I find interesting is that they have you chain 22, but it measures six inches. As you can see mine, I chained 19 and it doesn't measure anywhere near six inches. Using their own ruler in the back of the book, me chaining 19 doesn't even make four inches. 
So my hook may be a little bit small, but I kind of suspect that their gauge may be a little bit off with the fact that you're going to get six inches with 22 chains because that's that's a bit off for me. So I thought that's pretty neat and that does create a nice easy texture and it just alternates. So as you can see, you make these scallops with your chain threes and then what you do is work between them with your stitches and that pushes that stitch to create that texture. So yeah, that's pretty neat. So this magazine had a couple that, this pattern book I should say, had a couple that I thought had some pretty neat stitch patterns to them. So I might have to circle back through here and try some of these again, like some of those Afghan stitches with some different things. So there's the blanket we did. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So as you can see, they took their texture and they just alternated squares. But yeah, I'd say that matches pretty well. Pretty neat. All right, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this this video, feel free to give it a like. Um, subscribe if you'd like. That's kind of totally up to you. Um, I do thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you make anything with this stitch pattern, you know, I'd love to hear about it. You can comment below if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to say about this magazine or pattern book, rather. And if you would like to show off what you've made, you can email me at any time, alicia at myworkbasket.com. If I remember, I'll put that across here. So thanks for watching and have a great day.